a complete fraud was absolutely long planned from the start to be the pretest for this type of abuse, deprivation, imprisonment, torture, and even wanton killing to consolidate control by the ruling elite. And he goes on to finish, I experienced firsthand just how successful that program has become. Many of you on my email list know exactly what I speak. He says, my friend bailed me out tonight, for which I am grateful. So I'll be getting caught up with the emails the next few days. I will update the story as time allows. And he signs it, I cry for America. That, folks, is one of the reasons and one of many stories that people don't understand that really happens in this world, in the United States. And um, I just wanted to share that with everyone. So I thank you for everything everyone's doing. And if you live in Massachusetts, I've, I've made announcements on top, uh, topics.com in the city of Lynn. We're having a Pots and Pans Brigade tomorrow at 345. So if you want to join us, feel free. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for your You're story. Welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow. Yeah. That's something, yeah. isn't it? Um, we have another caller. It's Keith from area code 205. Keith, you're on. Yeah, that's me. Hi, Keith. Go I, ahead. Uh, I was uh, wanting to comment on Drake about the carpentry stuff. I, I've been a carpenter you know, ever since I've been out of high school, I've been self-employed uh, doing carpenter work. And in 2006, when the comedy went south, you know, I, I've had 15, play, uh, uh, you know, workers laid off and uh, hadn't seen no end in sight, you know, to uh, put them back to work. Now, prior to that, you know, I was doing everything by the books, you know, taxes, had workman's comp, had $2 million liability insurance. And, uh, once I got into that system, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, it was very difficult to get out of it. And uh, they, they uh, you know, I've since uh, couldn't afford license and insurance no more. Now, my question is, uh, when this economy revamps, are we going to be able to go back to work without being licensed for everything that we do, you know? You know, how is this uh, going to affect the common man who's uh, trying to put food on the table and keep his utilities on and, uh, you know, to put his uh, kids through school or whatever and uh, not being able to afford it can't work unless you're licensed to do it. Well, my understanding is that a whole lot of the regulation, licensing, unnecessary garbage um, that does not apply to a lot of people is going to be done away with. Now, this does not mean necessarily you might not be tested in your chosen field to show your proficiency. My suggestion has been uh, towards the licensing uh, of a person for life until such time as something changes. You do it once, show you got a you get a one of those nice little cards like you know is uh, laminated so it lasts forever like a credit card looking little thing that says you you are bona fide whatever. Now that can be a commercial driver, that can be a carpenter, that can be uh, an electrician. No, I don't think you should have to have a license for everything. Um, you got carpentry, you got electrical, plumbing, heating, and cooling. Uh, then after you're done with that, uh, supposedly you're supposed to have a license to put drywall on. The carpenter can come back and do the trim, uh, generally, but having to have a paid license to comply with filling a government coffer for no reason, to me, is the same thing as theft. Proving that somebody's proficient one time, uh, maybe you might have a refresher course, you know, hour or two, we change this or this or this and we need to do such and such. Uh, that might not be, uh, to me, a bad idea. Uh, having somebody make sure that a person is uh, not strung out on drugs or drinking a lot when they're driving professionally, I think is a good idea. So long as that person is not driving erratically or being really extraordinarily stupid in their operation of the vehicle 
or the house don't fall down when you get done building it. I don't see there's a problem there. Uh, well, I've, I've, uh, I, took I understand a whole amount. I understand that most of the regulation deals with uh, code, which uh, is uh, pushed upon the people by a um, United Nations routine of unfunded mandate. This started years ago, but it's still prevalent today. They'll add a building code. Well, a code is not a law, but it's something you're supposedly got to comply to. Uh, so long as the thing is structurally sound, I don't see any problem with building it, no matter what it is. Um, if somebody can handle an 18-wheeler and do so without running over everybody or causing other people to run over each other, I don't see a problem with that person driving. Uh, so take a lot of the regulatory gobbledygook and get rid of it. Uh, <laughs> most of it is not necessary because you do, you take care of it anyway to make the customer happy. So, you know, uh, yes, I'd say that these things will be attended to. Now, my understanding is we're going to change the legal system to common law which means that we're going to also institute something called common sense. And boy, oh boy, is that going to be a tough one. Common sense, why do they call it common sense when it seems to be so rare? Well, uh, common sense would tell you that um, if you look at history and you understand it, all of the things done in society to the society by way of money or a lack of it, is pre-planned. These people are going to be removed. The system they're using is going to be removed. We're going to find ourselves in a situation where an honest person can go ahead and be honest and be thanked and congratulated for their honesty in what they're doing. Just that simple. The basic difference between freedom and slavery uh, environmental protection. Uh, what does a carpenter have to do with environmental protection? Well, uh, then you got OSHA, safety, it's for your own good. Well, same sort of stuff. All of these things got to go uh, or be modified to an extent where they're livable at the least. The economy, I'm going to bring that in. Uh, the collateral accounts that are coming at us are huge. And by huge, I mean everybody that wants to work, everybody who uh, needs a job, people who need to have a decent wage. Now, the prices of things according to the manner in which the currencies are structured are going to adjust. So in other words, a $10 an hour job might be equal to a $30 an hour job today. That it could be that much difference uh, at this point. The details of those sort of things have not been fully worked out, so I can't tell you what they are yet. When I find out, I guarantee you everybody will know. It will be published. We're going to have educational channels to tell you about all this stuff. Now, as far as somebody willing to work, then that person needs a job. Uh, it may not be exactly what they want right at first, but if they're talented, I'm sure they will find a way to get into their chosen profession, be that carpentry, flying an airplane, or something. Um, so you can look forward to the idea of a free economy that is actually uh, for the people instead of for the banker or the rich person. Difference, big difference. That answer your question? Yeah, uh, you know, I wanted to comment on these licenses. You know, I, when I took my license, there were carpenters taking their test who have been building all their lives in their communities, the best best builders in their communities, and they couldn't pass that test. Yeah. You know, they, they ask stupid questions on the test, uh, but, uh, you know, and some of them are legitimate questions, but, you know, it, it's, it's really ridiculous. If you've been building, you're the best builder in your community, you shouldn't have to uh, pass their test. As if people are willing to, uh, you know, by word of mouth, say, this guy is who you need to get. That's who I used. I simply loved it. You know, 
these licenses is really uh, are are stacked against the uh, people, you know, the way they regulate and everything. So hopefully that these regulations will uh, mellow out and do something, you know. Well, what I'm trying to express to you is that the social changes in conjunction with business changes in conjunction with financial changes. Um, the the plan that I have seen calls for 24-7 voting so that people can pick issues, get them on a ballot. You may have a ballot just as long as a presidential election. I don't know how, what, how exactly it's going to be structured, but it's going to be for the people, by the people. It is not going to be against the people. This sort of thing has got to quit. There may be some things that Everybody, not everybody can agree upon, actually, uh, totally, but it's a little bit good for everybody, and it's something that doesn't interfere with your life too much and is not all that bad. Anyway, that sort of thing, I think, would be applicable. In other words, the test should be, can you build, okay? And what do you know about building? Uh, do you know what it takes for uh, uh, a span of such and such feet uh, for a floor? Uh, you use a two by six, two by eight. Obviously, you wouldn't use a two before. Uh, you know, people know these things after years of experience. I, um, I know all that stuff there. Yes, exactly. I can, I and these cut, are the things uh, that need to be looked at. Dovetails. Well, what I'm saying is that these are the things that should be looked at, uh, not whether or not you know the code, which is a requirement and, and legality that's not necessarily something that needs to be any more than. Um, you need to use a, a, a two by twelve over a certain length that you probably already know anyway. Simple. It'll be changed as I understand it. Does that answer your question? Yep. Sounds like good news to me. All right. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Keith. You're welcome. Okay, we're going to go to Martin. He is in area code eight four seven. Martin, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I got a question for Drake about the financial reset. When when we have this period of time where the currencies are being zeroed out, you recommended using silver junk silver for transactions that will be uh, it will be resolved by weighing it and then offsetting it by spot. But if the currencies are being zeroed out, where what's that spot value going to be? Is it going to be the last known spot value because the currency is no longer you know, going to be reflective of that. And should people also have some cash on hand just in case, because I, I don't think there, I think there's going to be a lot of non-believers in the silver thing where they're still going to want to accept FRNs um, just to uh, sell their stuff, even though it may be suicidal for them to do so. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of that out there where they're not going to take yourself. Um, that could be. It could be. It could go to a, a straight barter system until such times as things straighten out. There's no, I don't know everything. I don't, I don't want people to get the idea I do. I know a lot, but I'm not in a position to dictate to anybody as to what things are going to be. The things that I've been uh, expressing are things that are a general plan that are generally being followed. Uh, a lot of the ideas are being worked on by people who are uh, pretty much experts in freedom, experts in finance, things of that nature. And I would uh, wait and see what they've got, what they have to offer. Now, something people are may not be aware of, these things will be offered. In other words, you get to look at it, you get to study it, then you get to vote on it. Do you think that's a good idea? Just that simple. Does it interfere with anybody but uh, the people that shouldn't be doing something anyway? I mean, you know, it's real simple. And if I got anything to do with it, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible so anybody, any educational background, any walk of life, uh, can get the idea of it without a problem. I will go out of my way to do that. That I, that I do. I will make that promise. Uh, if I got anything to say about it, I don't even know if I'm going to have anything to say about it. So we'll see what happens. But it's Next. probably a good idea to have a mixture of both cash and silver on hand just in case you run into that. I mean, a common sense that would not be a bad idea. Probably. That way you got both ends covered. 
and uh, but you don't know about the spot how they're going to how they're going to do that. I mean, is there, is there been any discussion as are they just going to freeze the spot 